short run profit maximization so in short run one of the factors is fixed now how do you maximize profits well what do you do is uh, let's say i have the production function y is equal to f of x1 x2 and i'm assuming that x2 is fixed right the input prices of x1 and x2 are w1 and w2 respectively so these are the input prices per unit input prices so what do you do you write your profit as what t into y minus w1 x1 minus w2 x2 bar basically p f of x1 x2 bar minus W one x one minus W two x two bar, right? So what do you do? I mean, uh, you differentiate the profit function with respect to x one because x one is the only variable which is under your control, right? I mean, you can increase or decrease x one in order to increase or decrease your profit because x two is fixed. P W one and W two are given to you, so this will be what. P del f by del x one minus w one equals to zero, right? So and this guy is nothing but the marginal product of input one minus w one is equal to zero. As you guys could see it very clearly. So this guy is what? This MP of input one is multiplied with price. It is giving you the value of marginal product, right? So if x one star, <clears throat> and let's say this is going to give you the input level x one star, right? So if x one star is the profit maximizing choice, so at that particular point, the value of marginal product is equal to the wage. So please write if x one star. <clears throat> is the profit maximizing choice of factor one then the value of the marginal product of the factor Of the factor should be equal to its price. Now, what is the price of the uh, factor one? W one. Should be equal to its price. Right, should be equal to its price. So, should I give you one example? <clears throat> so, supposedly y is equal to um, just a one variable function. Let's say, uh, how should I say? It? Let's say it is root of z one. So, although I should take up even z two as fixed, but I'm just giving you an example of the single input uh, profit maximization, right? Single input profit maximization. Single input profit maximization. So I can also write into Z two bar that is just working as a constant out there. But I just want to give you this example. Just have a look at this so that you can understand what this condition is coming out to be. So I write my profit. That is P Y minus W one Z one. Let's say W one is the input price of input one. So I write P root Z one 
minus W1 sigma. So in input one is the only thing which I can control. I don't have anything else. So this will be what? P upon two root Z1 minus W1 is equal to zero, right? P upon two root Z1 minus W1 is equal to zero. Now, if you look at it, this is nothing but the value of the marginal product. So what is the marginal product of Z1? One upon two root Z1. What is the value of marginal product of Z1? Right? Price into one upon two root Z1. So the thing which I would just want to tell you was that this is what my first order condition is given the tangency. Your P upon two root Z1 is equal to W1. That is the value of the marginal product is equal to the price of the input one. Achha, what is the other thing? Can I get the value for Z1 also? Just the exact value out here. So can I write it like this? P upon 2 W1 is equal to root Z1. So this is going to give me Z1 star as P upon 4 W1 square. Right? P upon, four, oh, sorry, P square upon 4 W1. So it is P square upon 4 Z1 is equal to W1 square. That's what it is. So, and this is the function of what? Output price and in. This is the function of what? Output price and input price. Huh? Output price and input price. So this is what? This is your unconditional input demand function. It is the unconditional input demand function. You with me? So let's go back to this condition again. Your P into MP of X1 minus W1 is equal to zero. So, so what do you do is, uh, is uh, beta, what is your, uh, what is your, uh, this guy? That is how Y is changing as X1 is changing. That is what your MP1 is. This is what it is. This is what MP1 is. Uh, so this is also telling you now. So if you increase the input one, how is y changing? Fair enough. So I can write this as delta x. Take it. So and the value of delta y would be what? Just multiply this with p. P M P one delta x one and cost of delta y would be cost of using these, right? Cost of using beta. You've been able to produce delta y with a change in x one. So what is the cost of change in x one? You've been able to produce delta y with a change in x1. So you employ one more unit of x1 so that you are able to produce a unit of output or one more unit of output. So what is the cost of that changed input? That one more unit of input, w1 into whatever delta x1. So cost is what? Cost of delta y is what? w1 delta x1. <clears throat> now you, you think about it this way. If P M P one delta X one. If the value of delta Y is more than the cost of producing delta Y, your profits can increase. You employ more X one then, right? So you should be employing. Uh, you 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 can increase profits by increasing the amount of X one. then profits can increase.
by increasing in input value. Right? <clears throat> if P M P one delta X one is less than W one X W one delta X one means if the value of the margin product, if the value of producing delta y is less than the cost of producing delta y, you should not be producing this. So you can increase because in case if now if you increase x1, your cost is going to increase more than the value what it can produce. So you should be rather reducing x to increase profits than Profits can increase by decreasing, by decreasing input one, by decreasing input one. You with me? So when the cost of producing uh, delta y and delta y could be produced by the change in employment, that is delta x one. So the cost of delta x1 is less than the value which this delta x1 is going to produce. <clears throat> Sorry. You should be producing more. You can increase your profits by employing more of x1. But if the cost of using this delta x1 is more than the value it, it is going to produce, you should be rather reducing x1 or you can you should be rather reducing x1 to increase profits. You with me? Because in case if the cost is more than the value it is producing, then uh, in that case, what will happen is if you increase x1, your costs are going to, going to be more than the value it is going to produce, the profits are going to fall. Our aim is to maximize the profits. Our aim is to maximize the profits. Right? So, and if the value of delta y is equal to the cost of producing this delta y, then it means the profits are at their max. You cannot just change them. So, if profits are at max, then profits will not increase or decrease. In fact, I should rather that will not increase or will not change on a chain by increasing or decreasing input one by increasing or decreasing input one. So at profit maximizing choice of inputs, inputs and outputs, VMP1 is equal to W1. VMP1 is equal to W1. So you keep this condition in your head, right? So we'll take the discussion further tomorrow. Thank you, Vidal.